Hi everyone, now this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying. Now it's uh, another request, uh, or a few requests within this fly. One was uh, could I tie a hopper pattern, could I tie a stone fly, or a golden stone, or a bullet head pattern like this, and which is this style here. So there's a there's a few questions within this. Now I have to be honest, I, I don't tie a lot of this type of fly. So I hope at least there's some tying methods within this fly that you find useful and uh, it's, it's the simplest one I know uh, and one I tied many years ago. So I'm going to be showing you this. Now this is it's a good golden stone type fl uh, fly and uh, one that I'm sure uh, you, you would catch with it, especially obviously now in America when I, originally these were tied for. I mean, you get, you get hoppers, you get stonefly everywhere, but you certainly do get a good hatch in certain rivers in America, so. And we tie in a size 8 bubble suit, this one here. Now this one here is from Veneers, this, this, this is the hook I'm using. Size 8, it's actually a nymph hook, but it's, it's a good strong hook, ideal for a few types of flies. The thread I'm going to be using is the Fire Arms Uni, and in this case I'm actually using an 8 -0. So, I'm going to wax the thread, you need to get it. Especially at this point, uh, you need grip all the time, but this just helps when I'm going to be forming this the wing and the bullet head. So I'm going to put down head length, which if you add in the tail of this fly, which is part of the body, is probably around about a, a quarter of the, the whole fly in length wise. So then I'm going to come back up right to the eye. Again, make sure it's waxed, ready for tying in the deer hair. In this case, it's for elk hair. This is a, the elk I'm using. Now, the, this is at its limit. Now, you've got to make sure you can find a good length, and this suits this fly. Now, I'm actually I'm not going to put the full amount on at once. I'm actually going to put so it's on half, and then it makes it easier to tie in. Try to put it all on at once. It just you struggle a wee bit. Now I'm going to just clean the ends here, cut ends, just to remove the fluff and any broken ends. Tips first into the stacker. Just tap on your desk. Make sure the tips have lined up. Length, you're looking, at, it's got to reach to the, well into the back of the hook here. If you imagine the tail being there, you want it there. As I say, this case, this is right at its limit. There's a couple of broken ends there. So I'm going to tie it right up at the, the very end. Just there. I'm going to catch it. But come around with a turn and make sure that turns right at the eye. Nice and tight. And then just ignore the, the deer here and come down the broken ends. Make sure it's secure. To about there. And then trim away the waste. See where things are. It's fine. Well, that's good enough. Get them up the way up. Again, make sure you wax your thread. You want to make sure these ends are right up, you want your thread right up to the eye. It's amazing how much you travel, so away when you tie something on, I do it. I'm no just checking them right up at the eye. Because when we tie this fly off, we're going to tie off at the back here, so just check it and see that's fine. So we're going to do the same again. So see it's, it's much tighter to tie it in uh, half at a time, so yeah, make sure it's nice and clean in the ends. Remove the fluff and then stack it. Have lined up. So all the ends, there's the length, just make sure. There we go. And again, we can do exactly the same as I say, just catch it at the top, two or three turns. We can check it's fine, reasonably close to where we want it tied in. We can always, we're going to come back up. Make sure these ends are out of the way. There we go. 
I'm back down. As I say, this, you've got plenty of room in this fly. I'm just going to break these ends off. If I can, trim that away. Make sure your hook's tight in the vise. Of it's better. Again, we're going to come back up. Exactly this we're doing exactly the same we did. Just making sure the deer hair's right up at the eye. If you do that, you end up with a better. You should end up with a better head. And then we're going to work our way back. We tie in the tail, and we tie in some more of the elk hair as a tail as well. And the material for the body I'm going to use for the uh, the tail. Now this is an old packet of. It's called uh, polypropylene. You can still buy it. This is just a hot orange. Uh, you can't buy this one here, but you can you can still buy the material. So taking the length off, I'm going to catch it on the length of the body. I'm just going to quickly take the thread up, make sure it's secure and back down. Trim. It's hard to say the measure like, but you're looking round about at least not the body length, but not far off it. There. We've got some the elk hair which is used in the wing and the head, so we want some of that for the tail. Then just make sure it fluffs away and they stack it. This is just basically an extension for the, the body and the, the elk just helps to give it a bit of stiffness, it keeps it nice. So we get the length just slightly by the ends, just makes it better, I think. I'm going to trim it the length of the body, which is there. And we can do the same. So we're basically going to catch it in. Just check the length, that's fine. And then quickly take thread turns up, just securing it in. And then keep a hold of the tail as you come up against it. Let me see where we are. Just come around, have a wee quick look. Now, that's it. Just make sure they're both together. It's fine. So we're going to go back to this. Is going to be their body, their underwing, and even the thorax. So basically, it's going to. I'm going to I'll show you as we go along. I'm going to catch it. Well, before we do that, sorry. I'm going to tie in a hackle. Trying to jump ahead of myself. What we have here is a, a grizzle hackle dyed uh, olive. It was just a short, this was uh, from a pro grade hackle and the X, or saddle sorry I've got from Whiten. So just bear some of the stem, make sure that's secure. And then we'll go back to the poly yarn and catch it in the length of the body. Right. Thread up. There we are. And we start at the back. Now, first thing I like to do, just use my nail here, just to slightly spread that first turn. You'll get a weak and a twist. That's fine. Let me see. That looks fine. And then we just want to form our body with it, nice and tight. Which one near here? To this point here. And then tight as we can. Best just to cut it away. We're going to use it again though, we're going to use it for, as I say, we're going to use it as an underwing. Uh, makes the fly float forever. Uh, really good stuff. Once you put your floating on it, we're going to rub the body with our hackle. Now, these stems and these hackles are really strong. So, uh, just rub the fly all the way up. Throws the colour, really nice. This olive orange mix works. I mean, if you're going to use a natural hackle, uh, one of the other ones would be a Cree, is good. It's got a nice colour. So it always use long fibres of the day here, trying to catch us out. Just tidying things up here. So we're back to, again, as I say, the poly yarn, so part of the whole fly, I'm going to tie this in. As an underwing, you could leave this out, 
but it makes a difference. It fly floats even more. The length, I would to the back of the hook, just don't not the full length of the wing, just say to the back, right to the line with the back of the hook, it's there. And then just brush it. You could do it all the way down, but I like this it's separated. I like it to keep it near enough the body length in a way. There we are. Now, uh, basically what I've got here is remains of the polyarn. I'll show you, I'm just going to... What I'll do is I'll just cut it into, like, around about three quarters of an inch, a couple of centimetres. And then I sit and blend it within my fingers. I make my own dubbing using the same fibre, same colour. And it, it just makes it easy, it just works. And it's a... You add your floatant to it, it helps to float the fly. Now I'm going to take my thread up to the wing. So I've got my blended dubbing here. Just lightly dub it on. Dubbed reasonably well. I mean you could use whatever you like, but this just makes keeps the colour right. It's form a nice shape. Good thorax on it. To say it does represent like a well, obviously a stone fly. Just need a wee bit more to get back down. So it represent the uh, a grasshopper. It's just one of the type of flies. So you work my way back through, end up at the back, we just then form our bullet head. So what we do is we just bring it over, and my thread is here obviously, and make sure I wax my thread. So we bring this over, put your thumb on the front here, make sure it's tight. Come round with two or three turns, keep the wing on top. See what it looks like, that's fine. The length is good. Just happen to have a nice piece of elk that actually suits this size of fly. Now for the legs, I'm actually just going to use a Uniflex. In this case, this is called Camel. It's a nice colour, it suits the fly. So we'll take a length out. And basically what we do is we just, I hold the very end, come underneath the, the thread, just hold Flex plus the, uh, or the uniflex, just come round and then bring it to the side you want it to be. And then when you're happy with the position, you just tighten up three or four turns. I usually trim it in line with the back of the hook, or the right, partly in line with the tail. There. Do the same again. I actually like to come all the way around, make sure it's not going to move. Again, we just then uh, tighten up. Trim the back. Twirl this. There you go. There you go. That's <coughs> your uh, basically hopper, excuse me. Just trim the end, make sure these are lined up. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do here is to make sure there's a few turns in. And if it finish. We could put a wee bit of dubbing to hide the thread, but I actually like the colour. Fire on, that's why, that's why I'm using it. It's a wee aiming point as well. There we go. So, thing you can do if you want, you can mark the legs using a permanent marker. This is just a brown permanent marker that I've got, uh, which is mark it, you can use black or brown, it is basically, over there, just 
to get down. I don't have to do this, but it looks good. You can see the difference once I finish how much it makes. As I say, I'm no I'm no expert in these flies. Um, there's some ideas probably in there you, you can use in your own pattern. I mean, you can tie this fly smaller as well for small caddis. So there we are. And then we all have to do, you can use a UV resin, or in this case I'm just using a clear varnish. And I'm putting plenty in. Just let it soak, just... Some on the under right, underside. Oops, just got some hair there. If you get it on the hair, just wipe it off your fingers. There we go, that should do it. And there we are. That's uh, my can I tell you a quick go at tying like I'm trying to answer questions as I say. Uh, a good wee pattern, good style floats really well, will represent a stonefly, will represent a grasshopper, so certainly worth tying and uh, so I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.